Good morning, San Francisco, and welcome to the Consulate General of the Netherlands in the heart of San Francisco. It's eight o'clock in the morning here, and we're very happy to see you at this first virtual mission on smart and e-mobility. The Netherlands and California are both leaders when it comes to smart and e-mobility. And during this week, more than 100 Dutch and American uh, companies will connect and build a new and stronger network, share expertise and all online from the comfort of their own home. Of course, economic diplomacy is done best in real life, when you, can, when you can look each other in the eyes and give each other a handshake. But this week, we'll try to bring you as close as possible as Silicon Valley as possible. You all have a busy week ahead. And with this show that will start the day off every day, we'll give you a brief introduction into the day and the topics of uh, the day. And if you have any question, please leave them in the chat box that you see below this viewer, and we'll answer them later in the show. If you want to share uh, about the virtual mission on social media, please do use the hashtag NLUSA, the hashtag Digitale Missie, and tag us, the Consulate General, uh, at NL in SF. But I'd like to start with introducing the Consul General of the Netherlands, Mr. Gerbert Kunst. Good morning. Good morning, Sietse. I believe this is one of the first times you're back at the consulate, and now we're uh, six feet apart. Yeah, that's How right. How has lockdown been for you and the consulate? Well, it has been a difficult time for everyone. And just like the Netherlands, San Francisco went into lockdown mid-March, and the Mayor Breed, London Breed, issued a shelter-in-place order, and we're all uh, at home uh, to take care of our family and friends. Um, it was important, of course, to minimize the risk of spreading the virus. So my family was at home, my kids were doing school from home, I was working from home, like all the colleagues of the team of San Francisco. So how did this virtual mission start? Well, actually, there was, a, I would say, a normal trade mission uh, to Portland for the EVS. And this was just uh, cancelled and it changed into, um, I would say, an online webinar setting. And then we're thinking, this is maybe a good opportunity. Why don't we use the opportunity to do something different? Because we already, over the last uh, three months, changed a bit the consulate into an e-consulate. Because we started in the early days to help, of course, Dutch tourists first to get them back home. And we help businesses to continue to doing business here in California. But we're feeling like we should maybe uh, change a bit, uh, pivot a bit our services. Because we're not able to receive any guests here or do lectures, whatever, what, like we used to do, of course. So we changed it to an e-consulate, starting up with webinars in the first days. And then after that, we were thinking perhaps we could do even better to start with a digital trade mission. Well, it hasn't done before, so we have to see how that works out. I'm optimistic. Like, I feel we have great partners that helped us out this week. And because we have, of course, uh, quite a lot of experience because of our normal trade missions. But then again, it feels a bit like a startup in Silicon Valley, you know? Make a prototype test. Uh, would almost use the phrase like uh, fake it until you make it, but we didn't fake it because we made it, I would say. Yeah, so this is a, it's a true pilot. It's true pilot. So for all of us, it's new. I think uh, it's even new for California. We'll learn more from the lieutenant governor later. Uh, so I'm excited. There's a bit tension in the air, I feel, and the whole team of the concert is involved, like the team of the innovation attaches, the team of the NFIA and the economic department, and even our friends who are always doing the work behind the scenes. So uh, for me, it's an exciting week. And I think we have quite something to offer because in the end, what we would like to do is to continue to offer services to businesses that want really to set next steps here in California. Even, yeah, I would say in these unprecedented times, it's really important to continue to, uh, well, promote the opportunity to do business with California. So what are some of the elements that the participants can expect this week? It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, I think, like this morning's show, will give you a lot of practicalities. It will help you a bit maybe to uh, navigate the, the online platform, because I think that's our home base this week. So on the platform, you'll find uh, all the participants. You can do networking, matchmaking. You'll find links to all the sessions. Um, and we've put in a lot of webinars on all important topics, because, of course, the focus of this mission is smart and e-mobility. So we have put in a wonderful seminar, for example, on hydrogen tomorrow. And we introduced a bit the parts you would expect in a normal trade mission. Just like I would invite you into my house and uh, sort of give you some drinks in my garden. So we have a social later today. And, uh, of course, we would have done something like matchmaking. So we organized the matchmaking. Yeah, it's all virtual. It's all online. But still, we hope you'll find all the elements you like to see in a trade mission. And in the end of the day, I hope on Friday that you're still happy with all that we offered. 
Yeah, so it's basically a real trade mission, but then just, just online. In a way, it's all the same, but then different, I would say. So currently, it's still not possible for Dutch uh, businesses to travel to the US. There is a travel ban and uh, San Francisco is still very much in lockdown. So let's take a look at this video by Alien Rides, who took a tour of San Francisco in lockdown on his electric unicycle. Hey, what's up YouTube? Alien Rides here. Today I'm just gonna ride around San Francisco and talk about the state of things during the COVID-19 pandemic. Subscribe and let's ride. Boba guys, my favorite boba shop, closed. All these shops are boarded up. More boards. Boards are everywhere. Nice restaurants, all closed. Fancy shops, closed. Last mile transportation shop, open. This is another cool boba spot, but you have to order at the door, you can't go inside. Malls are closed, clothing shops closed, grocery shops are open. Another mall, another closure. Black Sugar Boba Shop is open and Black Sugar Fresh Milk is delicious. The Magic Burger Machine, in operation. The Magic Burger Portal, also in operation. Sounds a lot better. <laughs> Have a good one, man. Thank you. Magic Burger. Not bad. And there's loads of people walking on the Embarcadero. And Fisherman's Wharf, a really popular tourist spot, is fully closed off. These are the famous San Francisco sea lions. They don't give a damn about the coronavirus though. They're doing whatever they want to. Ghirardelli Square, also closed. Lots of people enjoying the park. So they have these public places where you can go and fight gravity, but they're all closed. This is another little park for fighting gravity, also closed. Park parking lot in Marina Green, also closed. There are signs everywhere to stay six feet apart. All of the picnic areas, closed. So this is all parking for the beach, and it's all closed. Beach Chalet, nice little facility here by the beach, also closed. Golden Gate Park is pretty much open, but this roller rink in Golden Gate Park is actually closed but there's a few rebels around. Well, we made it to our last leg of our journey. We're at Twin Peaks right now in San Francisco. And as you can see, the main road here is closed to cars, but you can still walk a ride up. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. But that's all I had to show you guys today. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all next time. Peace out. It feels like, well, things have really changed. And now I would like to welcome our guest here in the studio, Gigi Wang. And Gigi, you're an industry fellow at the University of California, Berkeley. And uh, I would like to ask you, all the participants, of course, to uh, put some questions in our chat box, because we promised you an online and interactive platform, and it's there. Just put in your questions, and Gigi will deal with them later. But now, of course, first question to you, Gigi. Um, how did you cope with this situation, the shelter in place? Well, um, my business is I teach around the world. I go and I teach innovation workshops and entrepreneurship workshops a lot in the Netherlands. So I have a very close relationship with the Netherlands and the Dutch consulate. And with the COVID, all the travel, of course, is completely shut down. And so for the first two or three weeks when COVID started... I was a little bit sad, maybe a little depressed, because you had to stay home and you didn't get to go and work with all these amazing people in the world. But what I found is that the, everyone around the world, people are so resilient and innovative. And so in the last three months, I've ended up teaching a program for entrepreneurs in Hong Kong for the Hong Kong government teaching another program and running it for the University of Oregon. And we had a grand finale on Saturday, and it was fabulous. And then also this week, I'm working with the Amsterdam Center for Entrepreneurship, ACE. They have a cohort. So it's actually, in some ways, we found it's more, even more positive by be, doing it online. I actually get to spend more time with the startup, more time in mentoring them rather than back to back to back. I see. So actually, I mean, in a way, of course, we all miss the personal contact mm -hmm. because we missed you here at the consulate, of yeah. course. You have helped us in so many occasions. 
and uh, perhaps because you know the Dutch so well. How do we fit in here in Silicon Valley? Uh, what do we uh, really should sort of learn and do better? Uh, because you've seen so many startups or young mm -hmm. entrepreneurs coming to the valley, and then sometimes they were surprised that they were not successful. Right. Well, the, the, um, the thing about Silicon Valley and some of the similarities is that people in Silicon Valley really value win-win. They value exchange. And Dutch people are very honest, very open, and very fair. So you, it's very easy. Is you share some information with them, they'll share some information with you, and you help each other. And so that's a way that the Dutch work really well with mm, people in Silicon Valley. Another thing is that the Dutch are very innovative. For such a small country, you know, interesting enough, you know, Python, the latest you know, computer language, was actually developed in the Netherlands. And all the students here in the U.S. are learning Python. And so there's a lot of innovation coming from the Netherlands, and matching it up with the innovation from Silicon Valley is a total win-win. Well, that's great, of course. And I think we all agree with you, of course, that we have really Dutch innovative solutions for global challenges. But maybe another thing here is, and we noticed that, of course, in the concert as well, to have a good pitch a sharp one, who's really sort of delivering to an investor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel we could do better. And uh, I know, you know, uh, that you mm -hmm. sort of teach us a bit to, to do that better. What kind of advice do you give us here? Because we had also in our program, our preparational program, a pitch course. Um, how do you feel about that? Oh, I think that is a fantastic idea for the startups to have some training. Only startups? Because we, I think, have as well many smart and medium enterprises coming <laughs> over. Absolutely. Small and medium. I tend to work with startups, so I get a little bit of centered course. about them. But for any Dutch companies coming to the U.S., pitch training is immensely valuable. And the reason for it is that in the U.S., Americans are taught how to communicate and how to promote things from when they're young. While the Dutch... Mm, they're, they tend to want to be not stand out. They want everyone to be all equal. And so they feel like if someone promotes or talks about what they do, they're showing off. But in the U.S., you've got to, sh you've got to be able to speak succinctly, you know, promote your, whatever you're doing with passion for people to listen to you because there's so much happening here. And so the Dutch have to get out of their zone of wanting to not stick out and be able to promote it. Don't look at it as if you're showing off. What you're actually doing is that you are promoting this amazing innovation that you have so other people learn about it and they'll want to adopt it. And what you worked on actually can help mankind. Yeah, of course, we'd love to do that. And I was just thinking, because, of course, you're an industry fellow at Berkeley, you're connected mm -hmm. to Stanford as well, could you tell us a bit how the universities here uh, sort of uh, have a joint effort together with companies? Because I know we always sort of uh, brag a bit about our triple helix, but uh, I know that uh, both of the universities have their strong ties to industry and, uh, and businesses as well. Oh, absolutely. So uh, the universities here, um, Stanford, Berkeley, maybe um, San Francisco State, a whole bunch of others, there is a very networked ecosystem here where the universities work really close with industry. For example, I myself come from industry, and I teach entrepreneurship and innovation. And because I have the industry background, I bring that. And so we get people from industry to come and teach at the universities. We have a lot of relationships. Um, we have a program where, um, where companies will sponsor a class. And in the class, the students work on an uh, issue that the problem the company has, like Amazon, and could the, the Dutch company put forward a question? Oh, think? absolutely, absolutely. We're looking for international um, participation. So, if international Dutch companies have some solutions, they can partner with our center to work on that problem. Well, that sounds great. Um, Sitz, I was wondering, we have a chat box, and of course, I will invite you to uh, come forward with a question. Are there any questions yet for? Gigi. Yeah, I have one question here. Um, Gigi, you know the Dutch and Americans. What is one thing that Americans don't understand when dealing with Dutch entrepreneurs? Um, one thing that they don't understand with dealing with French 
Open Dutch entrepreneurs? Hmm. Well, I think sometimes they don't understand that element of the Dutch not wanting to show off. And so what happens is the Dutch, they're, they don't really come full force and talk about their product and really highlight the benefits and highlight how great it is. And so that doesn't come through. So sometimes in the U.S., listening to those Dutch people pitch, they don't realize how powerful it was. And we hosted a group, the top Dutch start, uh, academic startups last September, and one of the really, really strong companies that had a solution to um, fight neuro diseases didn't, didn't want to show off. And so initially, people didn't realize how valuable what he had was, but after learning to be able to present it and pitch it, a lot of people went, wow, this is going to change the landscape. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Gigi. Um, you mentioned the power of uh, pitching, um, and that's one thing that I want to highlight for all the participants. There's still uh, one live pitching session, pitching coach session with David Beckett tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, the Netherlands time. On the online platform, you can, uh, you can find information how you can join that online pitching course by David Beckett. Um, that almost brings us to the end of uh, Good Morning San Francisco. I want to share a couple of announcements with you. Um, the online platform, it has been mentioned. Please uh, take a look and uh, discover all the possibilities there. You're, um, you can connect to other participants. Uh, you can give them a star. And if they give you a star as well, then you are a match. Uh, it's almost like Tinder, this, uh, this virtual trade mission. Then you are a match and you will be connected in the online networking session on uh, Thursday. Um, and uh, please uh, follow the uh, online prepping program. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of videos. There are a couple of videos uh, about doing business in the U.S. Um, and uh, doing uh, and, and training pitching as well. Um, so that's that. So please let me uh, go through the program of today. What can you expect right now? So we started with Good Morning San Francisco. And um, after this, uh, we'll dive into the policy dialogue um, which leads us to the opening session with Minister uh, Sigrid Kaag from the Netherlands and the Lieutenant Governor of California, Eleni Kunalakis. Um, and after that, my colleague uh, Deborah will give you an instruction on how to use the online platform and all its features. Um, and we'll end the day with a networking session, an online networking session, uh, a social hour, um, uh, as if you, we are all here uh, connecting and making new friends and new business relations. This was Good Morning San Francisco. Thank you so much uh, for joining us and um, we'll see you in a bit. Thank you.